Hey, what up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you. Last night I was able to watch Night of Champions 2008 on the WWE Network. I had a lot of fun watching this show. I thought that the way that they built up the John Cena versus Triple H match at the end for the main event, uh, you know, pumping it up throughout the whole show, I honestly thought that it was a, it was a big deal that I thought that, like, um, they almost made it seem like it was a rematch from two years ago at WrestleMania. And um, basically, you know, Triple H was trying to get his win back. Uh, trying to say that you know he should have done uh, he's gonna do tonight what he should have done two years ago, and um, basically um, there, there was a big deal um, with the uh, the draft that just happened where uh, Batista was leaving SmackDown and he was going over to Monday Night Raw. Uh, was he gonna be able to take the World Heavyweight Championship with him? Um, a whole lot of things um, uh, like that. Um, the, the show was was stacked top to bottom, all with championship matches. Uh, you know from the year. Uh, Tag Team Championships, to your SmackDown Championships, United States title, Intercontinental title, ECW, uh, the Divas Championship, you had the uh, Heavyweight Championship, you had your WWE title. Lots of fun on this show, uh, building it all the way up from top to bottom. Uh, opening matches for the uh, SmackDown WWE Tag Team Championship, John Morrison and The Miz, going up against Finley and Hornswoggle. Honestly, in my mind, I thought this was going to be some sort of a... Uh, Handicapped tag match, sort of you can say two on one, but Hornswoggle was in this match for a good fair amount of time, and Miz and Morrison took advantage of that, actually beating up on the little guy uh, to the point where Morrison and Miz were able to get the win. Uh, from there, we went to United States Championship match. Matt Hardy uh, beat Chavo Guerrero with a big bam Neely on the outside. Uh, nothing really spectacular about this match, just was there. Uh, Mark Henry Kane and Big Show had about as good a match as they could have. Nothing really big or spectacular from here, but it was built up as, as uh, Mark Henry winning his first, which they called a main championship. Uh, you know, he'd been uh, hardcore, he'd been European, he'd been intercontinental. I don't think he's ever been United States champion, but basically this was the first one that he could put out there that he was the, the basically the world champion, even though it was only ECW. Um, you know, Kane and Big Show, uh, for, for a big part of this match, were double teaming on Henry to the point where uh, Henry was down, so Kane and Big Show started to fight amongst each other. There was a suplex off the top rope. Mark Henry came running out of nowhere, came and delivered a big splash. I think he pinned Kane, but I'm not sure who he pinned. But Mark Henry broke down in the ring. Um, it's not as good as when he won the World Heavyweight Championship when he beat Orton. But uh, it's, it's still a big moment for Mark Henry's career. From there, we went to the 2-on-1 handicap match for the World Tag Team Championships. This would be the Monday Night Raw things where... Cody Rhodes and Hardcore Holly came down to the ring and they were met by Ted DiBiase saying that his tag team partner had texted him and said that he was going to be about 10 minutes late. If they could only start the match, he'd be able to fight them both off until his tag team partner was able to come out and make his debut. They rang the bell to start the match. Um, Hardcore Holly got him in the ring. He was attacked and hit by the crossroads um, by, by his own partner, Cody Rhodes, who went across the ring and tagged in Ted DiBiase for some reason. <laughs> and as if in a two-on-one match, Ted DiBiase wasn't going to be uh, the legal man. Uh, Ted DiBiase came in and pinned him. Of course, this would be the start of um, their tag team was called um, Legacy. And then uh, that would go on to, to, to be the, the, the group with um, Randy Orton uh, and everything like that. But that was a good team. Um, Kofi Kingston uh, beat Chris Jericho with outside interference. Uh, when Shawn Michaels came and, and ran in, of course, this was during the time when Jericho and Shawn Michaels are having one of the best feuds of their career, uh, where um, Chris Jericho was calling his hero, Shawn Michaels, a fake and a fraud. He threw his head through the uh, Jericho Tron on the, uh, uh, on the uh, Jericho highlight reel. And then, of course, they did the uh, table spot where he smashed his eye into the side of the table. Um, yeah, Jericho uh, got pretty banged up in this. They were playing off the fact that he really couldn't see out of one side of his head. Uh, that his eye was just too badly bruised, but uh, this was the big-time feud. Kofi, of course, took the Intercontinental Championship away from Chris Jericho, so that wouldn't be involved in the feud. Uh, Mickey James fought Katie Lee Virgil in what was the biggest, uh, probably the biggest match of her career. One of the only few that I can really remember. I always really liked Katie Lee Virgil. I always liked Mickey James, two of the hottest divas they've ever had. Um, this was a good match. I don't know why they never went back to it. Katie Lee Virgil seemed to be one of the divas who could actually actually wrestle. But much like Gail Kim, they just never really used her in, in big places in WWE. It's almost like they signed her just so somebody else wouldn't be able to have her. 
Um, she wrestled this match. She wrestled another match on Sci-Fi before her release, which was involved with the whole Hurricane superhero deal. And um, it is what it is. I don't know why she never got another shot. I always wish she would have. Um, Edge uh, went up against Batista, and this was uh, deemed as the last chance for Batista uh, to have a shot at Edge in the World Heavyweight Championship. Last time it was because they had fought too many times and he wasn't able to pull out the win. This was actually because Batista was leaving SmackDown and heading to Raw. This was nothing more than a La Familia screw job. Uh, basically, when a ref bump, um, general manager Vicky Guerrero came down as she was preparing for her wedding. Um, you know, she came down with the Edge heads, basically asked for a special guest referee to come out. Chavo Guerrero and Bam Neely came down, and it was just a big old clusterfuck. Edge got to keep his championship by beating Batista, and it just was supposed to make you a little bit mad. I think the next night on Raw is when Batista comes and beats up Edge, which leads to CM Punk cashing in and becoming the World Heavyweight Championship and bringing a belt over to Raw, since both belts were going to be living on SmackDown, because in the main event, Triple H was able to beat John Cena, um, and, and this was a, a big match that played up into the, uh, the STFU, where basically John Cena has it on Triple H, Triple H has it on John Cena, and uh, I popped for this big time, because in my mind, I thought that John Cena had beaten Triple H every time they had a match, and uh, Triple H, out of the middle of nowhere, got the win on him, and I would, I'm screaming, and I'm going crazy, this match was seven years ago from today, and um, I, was, I, was going, I was going at it, probably like some fans were going at it that night, who we were Triple H fans, who didn't think that he had a chance in the world to beat John Cena, and here he is, he gets a win over him, I was pumped, you were pumped, check this out on the WWE Network, it was a good show, honestly, you'll enjoy it, and you'll like it, and um, we'll go on from here to hopefully the 2009 Night of Champions sooner than later, peace out.